welcome welcome to whispers in ink oh, you guys i'm really nervous about today something that we have never done here on the whispers in ink youtube channel and fingers crossed because you guys this is not my wheelhouse but i'm here to share some ideas about a two-page scrapbook spread <sighs> all right so if you're new here, I am Jennifer. You guys, I am a, I'm not only here to inspire you, but I'm here to give you permission to try something new, which includes me, right? Oh, all right, so I have a friend that, um, actually, I have a couple of friends, believe it or not. Um, I have a friend that made a comment to me, sorry, moving things around to rearrange, um, made a comment to me about how nobody does scrapbook pages on YouTube from Stampin' Up. Now, I know that I have a couple of friends that I know that do scrapbook pages, but not a lot. So I figured maybe I would sprinkle in a page or a, a couple of two-page spreads as something new. Now, I... Like I said, you guys, in the beginning, this is not my wheelhouse. But I had an idea. As soon as she started talking about it, I had an idea. Because one of the things that I just purchased, believe it or not, you guys, I only just got this. And this is, and I'm going to try to get the glare so you can still see what's going on. This is the boat punch. Now, the first thing that I saw with this boat punch is you guys to me that looks like an old school um sandbox now what am i talking about jennifer you're crazy what the heck are you talking about so i went and looked for a picture because you know when you're doing things new you got to do a little bit of research right so that i did so here and we're going to put that to the side. I had my, I always watch my YouTube on my iPad, you guys, just in case I miss some comments up on my screen up here. So, sorry, distraction. Okay, so this is the sandbox that I'm talking about. I remember as a kid having a sandbox at my grandparents' house. Now I'm old, I do know that. However, not that old. And then I'm like, okay, so we had this type of the sandbox, but then of course that came up, totally cute, a little boat, loved that idea. But then I'm like, okay, so what kind of tools do we have um, that we used in the sandbox as kids, right? So I found this. Now we're gonna do a bucket, um, a couple of shovels, I think, and we're gonna do some of these like seashelly kind of little things to use on our two page spread. Remember I said summer, okay? So with that, oh, you guys, are you with me? Are you with me here? Hopefully. Okay, so let's take a look at how I wanna start. Now, I, I, you, as you see, there is quite a menagerie of things over here. But let's start with the two. Oh, I got to move my coffee. Cheers, everybody. Let's move the coffee out of the way so I don't have to worry about dumping that. And let's move some ink so that I have some room. You guys, is it just me or does the, the crafty space get smaller and smaller the more that you do? <laughs> Okay, so I have two white DSP backers here. I have two of them as my 12 by 12 because I like mats. Now, first off, I want to double check these and make sure that these are actually 12 by 12 because sometimes these backers are... Actually, that one is. Sometimes these backers can be a little bit bigger. 
and this one is also actually this one's a little a little bit it was that long okay so always double check so i'm going to double check that one and let's double check this one that one is a scotch long and then we're going to do this Oh, you guys, I'm still, you know, I was getting ready to do this and my hands were shaking. Couldn't believe it. Something new. You always got to try new things, right, you guys? Okay. 12 pieces here. So this is going to be our two page spread. Let me move my camera so we can get the whole spread in here. There we go. Okay. So two pages. Now, remember I said I like to mat. Dropping stuff on the floor. So I've decided that in our two-page spread, we're going to have three photos. So I want to do photos like that and that, and then one like this. Okay, so I matted them with crumb cake, and we're going to, this is kind of, I think, what our layout's going to be, I think. You know, it's, it's always loose when we first get started, but that's my concept. So I have my photos ready, and typically, you guys, when you're doing a two-page spread or something of that nature, you take colors from your photos, right? I'm not using photos. So I'm kind of going all willy-nilly. So I have eight and a half by 11 pieces of cardstock. And this is garden green because this is going to be our backyard photo. This could be pool time. This could be just backyard fun, whatever. And then I have a piece of balmy blue. And you guys, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to cut the balmy blue in half. So we're going to cut this at four and a quarter and I'm doing short across the top because this is going to be our sky on here. So it's going to go with our mat kind of like this, but that to me is kind of boring, right? So you guys know I'm, I'm, I love a good rip of some paper. And we do have quite a bit of room, as you can see here. So I'm going to do a rip, and I'm going to do not straight. So that's going to be one. Now, if you wanted one to be, you could kind of go, let's put this down here, and you could kind of start here and work your way so that they're close to your yard, right? Close in, in, in uh, measurement, I should say, so that your pages kind of match up, right? So there's that part. I wanted to use the DSP backer because, you guys, it's free, number one. And number two, it adds a brightness kind of like a mat on a photo, okay? Think of it that way. When you're, took, when you're looking at paintings and you're looking at um, things that are put together, I really like having a mat. Plus, you guys, 12 by 12. Is a little more expensive and if you are a card maker already or if you like doing um, smaller things maybe not even 12 by 12 spreads by 11 already plus the thing is is that Stampin Up does not offer 12 by 12 in solid colors so my thought was why not figure out a way to use the eight and a half and eleven eight and a half by 11, sorry, um, 
and be able to use what you have available to you to be able to make your spread. So here is where we're at. And I don't think I'm going to throw these away because I'm thinking that this could add some extra depth and some texture. So I was watching a garden lady today, you guys, and I'm, I thought that this was actually really, really smart. She talked about, and I, I know exactly what she's talking about. She talked about, um, she used to watch What Not to Wear. And I loved that show. Totally loved that show. And she, Stacy London in that program, used to talk about color, texture, um, color, texture, pattern, and shine. Those four things. So those are applicable in gardening, I think shine from our little decorative pieces and we have shine of different leaves and then we have um, texture from different textured leaves. Why couldn't that apply to scrapbooking? Why not? Right? Right now I'm gluing up some things. I cut out and these will be our little seashell things for our um, sandbox and you guys none of this is going to be to scale obviously some of this is going to be a little bit bigger than others and that's okay all right so here we go I'm trying to glue and you guys you know that once one of your glues goes out the other one's going to go out too and I need to go grab some garden green ink so we've got our little seashell shapers here, and then we have, I have, if we do one on this side, we're going to do two trees, which is part of the reason why I wanted to keep this, because we could do our trees off of this, and then our tree here, and then I have granny apple green and old olive leaves for our trees here. Do, do, do. Just, I'm showing you the menagerie of things that I have. So we're going to do our trees up kind of like that. And then I have some added texture elements. Remember? Pattern. Color. we got plenty of color going on here, right? Texture. And then we'll need some shine. But isn't that what our sun is for? All right. So let's go through what parts I've used here. I used the chick dies for this, for our shells, and for this. I have the aspen dies, which I forgot to put up here, you guys. And I also have the hey chuck for our stamp. Now I'm going to use, I have my blending brush and I have my crushed curry, because I do want to do a little glow off of that, a little bit of shine, if you will. And then... Once we kind of get some of these pieces together, I want to replace our photos on here and then go from there. Now I did also grab, which I'm sure you guys can see, you guys, my yard is all sand. So I grabbed some sand from outside and I figured, I don't know about you guys, but kids never keep all the sand in the sandbox, right? So I thought that we would use some glue and make some pockets of sand around where the sandboxes are going to be. So one sandbox, two sandbox, that doesn't matter. But let's cut those so we can see where we're at. Because there's a lot going on here, right, you guys? I'm loving how this is coming together already. Very excited. So there's no way to cut our sandbox out without cutting out part of the sail. But this is the sandbox that I want. And then I want to use our sail. And I'm thinking this bigger one. And I want to go back with this starry sky. And we're just going to do the canopy. Kind of like that. 
what do you guys think about that as a kind of sandbox? I think we'll bring that down just a little bit, kind of like that, as our little canopy for our sandbox. Oh my gosh. And then we've got Starry Sky and Parakeet Party for our parts. Our pail, we have a pail, and we also have a shovel. So like I said, you guys, not all this is going to be to scale. But we're, I figured we'll put the sandbox on one side and the things that are going to be a little bit bigger we'll put on the other side or vice versa. So let me get the garden green ink so we can dirty up our little, our little grassy, our little grassy groves over here. Garden green ink. Maybe, maybe not. Garden green ink and oh you guys the dauber fell on the floor <sighs> I know I have a dauber so be patient let me find it this was an afterthought you guys you know how things evolve let's see old olive mossy meadow soft sea foam Seriously, I'm not seeing a green, you guys. Oh, here's an unknown one. We'll use that. There we go. One without a label. All right, so what I want to do with this garden green is I'm going to take my dauber and I'm going to take this part that we ripped off and I'm going to darken it up a little bit. And I think to do that, I think we're going to put it on here because I really... That's not going to give me the darker that I want, I don't think. No, well, it will if I... Oh, there we go. All right, so a couple of different techniques in here. Thinking outside the box, which, oh, you guys know how much I love thinking outside the box. Okay, so here's that one. Ooh, can you see that in the, oh, yes, you can. <gasps> Loving that. And then I'm doing the same thing, but I think this one I ripped the other way, so got to go that way. And the way you rip makes a difference. And I know that sounds so silly, doesn't it? But it is true. The way you rip your paper, if you want to see the little rippy parts, which I love being able to see the little rip parts, you want to rip towards you to be able to see that part. A little bit darker here. Oh, okay. Get rid of this disgusting piece of scrap paper. All right, so I'm thinking that we're doing good here. What do you guys think so far? Make a comment. Look, oh, I'm thinking I'm liking this. All right, so I'm going to put our trees together here. And now you could, we could do, you know, the two garden green or a, a granny apple green trees together and the two old olive this this is old olive because i wanted tree colors without being grass colors i think actually for this one i think that's what we're going to do is we're going to coordinate and we're going to do some dots of glue put our trees together And I'm just doing a little bit, just enough. You could also dirty this up with your dauber. That would totally work. Going to make our canopy. There's our canopy of our tree. And I should be using my craft sheet. 
Okay. And then we're going to put a couple of dots of glue on here. And there's our tree. I love that as a tree, you guys. You, If you need to, if you want your trees to be different heights, you can feel free to go ahead and cut that. And then let's create this tree. And I'm thinking this one, we might go this way. Oh, yeah. That way. And then we'll pull up this tree trunk. Put a couple dots of glue there. There's our tree number two. So now we have, and we can stagger these kind of like that in our imagery. So one of the things that my friend was saying is that not a lot of people use Stampin' Up! stuff to create scrapbook pages, but, you know, even for just stamping, well, this is definitely not a stamping event right here. However, I'm, I, I wanted to start doing a scrapbook page with something that I felt comfortable with. I, you guys, and that's the thing. You know, you got to be brave and try, but you also have to have a little bit. I like to take like what I would do for a card and tweak it for it to be a scrapbook page, right? So it doesn't, ha it's not rocket science. I've made these trees for cards before. I knew that these trees would work. So now with this, this way, and we'll put this one here, and I think we're gonna switch these two around, and we'll put this one here. And I'm thinking that that one's going to go a little bit lower. So we're going to have to trim that bottom because I don't want that. But that's no big deal. And this, this little hill part, I'm going to put that on with dimensionals along with this one. So it's easy to tuck stuff in. And then this one's still going to remain our single our single photo over here and then I'm thinking we could use some texture and maybe a couple of our little sand pieces there and then we'll take oh where are there other uh oh oh did I lose them nope 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 they're right here and then let's do let's figure out what our layout's going to be for this part and I know you want journaling space. I get that. We're just working on our layout here. And I'm thinking we're going to overlap that like that. And then maybe put maybe put that there and we'll do our buckets and stuff. Oh my gosh, you guys. Look at us. We're scrapbooking. Now we do want our hills to be kind of in the same spot, so we're going to have to move this down because it's we want it to be cohesive, right? So we're going to move this and put those there. Move that down a little bit. Like that. I think we're going to do our little sandbox over here. Put that on here. We're going to glue that together. So we're going to take our silicone craft sheet with our glue. And it's funny, you guys, because, you know, please leave some love, you guys. If you're catching this video and you, you think that you understand where I'm going with this craziness. So there's our little sandbox, and we'll put some dots of glue with a little bit of sand in them 
What do you guys think? I'm thinking this is pretty darn good. Especially for somebody who's never, you know, who doesn't typically do scrapbook pages. I'm thinking this is pretty good. Okay, so I wanted to make a shovel, right? I know this is, like I said, it's out of scale, but, you know, but don't get technical on me now. You know, no punch art police, please. Let me move some things here. Okay, so what I did to get our shovel head is I used our double oval punch. Okay, see where I, where I went to take with this? Use that, and then, again, silicone craft sheet here, and I took, do, 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 a scrap piece here for a shovel. Super simple. Well, we're going to glue that on. And maybe it could be a little bit skinnier, but, you know, I'm, I'm a chunky, I'm a chunky shovel lover myself. So we've got a shovel, but here's the thing. Doing the same concept of what I did here, I'm also going to make it a tad bit taller like that and guess what we're going to use that for you guys we're going to oh and it's crooked darn it we're going to take our scissors and I want to straighten out just a scotch so there's our our straight top and then I'm cutting the bottom like that. And look at this, you guys. This could be a pot. This could be a pail. So after I cut this out like this, I took this piece. and punch that out to make the handle. See my handle? So we're gonna take this and gonna put a dot of glue there and a dot of glue over here. And maybe we are going to squeeze this for our pail, if you will. And I'm going to hold that on there. So we've got a little pail and a shovel. This could also, you could cut some tines in here. That could be a little rake. I am super happy with that. Now, think about this for a minute. No stamping on here, you guys. We have assembly, obviously, all right? But 29 minutes and we've got two pages. Now, I did do a bunch of cutting and stuff first. But we've got some bright pops of color in here. We've got some happy photos in here. And this is what summer is all about, right? Could even take the rain or shine and bring in some little like grassy sprigs in here. If you have those dyes, that would be cool. Um, some little picket fences even from the hay chuck dyes. I mean, there's a lot of possibilities here. You guys, we've got texture, we've got color. Um, Shine from our sun. We're going to go with the sun as our shine. And you could put Wink Estella on that and make it even shinier. Um, and the only thing we really don't have is pattern. But I'm thinking we have some pattern. That's kind of patternish to me. All right, so let's see how this all comes together. Now that we've got the layout the way that we want it. Oh, I'm very excited about this, you guys. 
Remember I said we're going to do dimensionals down here. And that's the other thing, you guys. Anytime that I have ever done a scrapbook page, my pages are not flat. I am not a, scrap, a flat scrapbooker. I like the stuff. I totally like the stuff. All of the things. So we're going to, whoops, we're going to put that on here. I'm going to see if I can hide. And I bet you we could probably hide some minis under here. Up here. Because I want a little bit of lift. Just a little. And then we're going to do a little bit of glue on the bottom. Take these off. Do, do, do. Like that. We'll put this in here. Like that. There's that. And then we'll do our boat, or not our boat, but our sandbox. Put our sandbox there. We still have to glue our sun together. So the die from the Hey Chuck does one single piece, but I thought it worked out perfectly. Silicone craft sheet. You guys don't have one of those? Oh, you guys, seriously. This thing is amazing. I have several. I love them. Great way to try to keep my desk clean of sticky stuff. So here's our sun. Now, do you guys see that little bit of glue there? Here's my tip for you. Take a piece of scrap that's in your garbage and just swipe it along that edge so that it comes off. And there you go. So with this, I did bring the crushed curry and that um, blending brush. And we need some scrap. And I want to add a little bit of depth to our sun. And then I also want to add a little bit of yellow to our edge here. Even on the white. Now remember, I hold back farther so that I don't get those splotchy parts. Okay, so we've got that. You guys know me and my dimensionals. And then we've got that brightness of the sun up there. Oh. There we go. All right. Now, basically, I'm going to lift these up. We've got all that stuff down. That's down. I want to glue these, or you can um, you can even glue dot. I'm going to glue. It's a choice. And for me, I got to make sure to get it back in this corner. I don't like to adhere the big parts, you guys, until I'm done and I'm happy with everything. So there's that. And you could, oh, I know, I know, hang on, I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. For that little hill, quote unquote, you guys, adhesive strips. Foam adhesive strips, 
there we go just like that just adding a little bit of that of that depth there and then we'll do a little bit of glue on the bottom just like that oh Joe's got just got home with our little kitty that we took to the vet to get fixed all right I want whoa I want to make sure that my edges line up oh dang it There we go. There we go. All right, so there's that. There's this page. Now we're gonna tack in, I'm gonna use just a glue dot to tack in my photo mats. There. And then this one goes up here and then we're gonna I'm just using one glue dot now I don't know if you like this much color on your pages I have no idea everybody likes different things you guys um, but it is summertime after all okay so this one's done now, I'm going to do this one a little bit different because I've learned from this side, you guys. So we're going to kind of move some of these things around. Move this and this. I'm going to wait to adhere that. And we're going to adhere this first because I want it all to line up. So we're going to take our glue and we're going to glue this on. Oh, you guys, she's almost at, oh, she's empty. That's it. That's all she wrote. She don't want to work anymore. So this one, we're going to line those edges up. And then we're going to line, line up this part. Like that. You could stamp some birds on here. If you have a small bird stamp, that would be cool. Any of the bird stuff that I have is super big. Um, we're going to do the same thing on this side that we did here. So we're going to take that another nice long piece of adhesive strip or adhesive foam. Foam adhesive strip. There we go. Say it properly. We're going to do that on that. rip that off and then we're going to line this up because remember we want it all to look cohesive just like that so there's our two pages and all of our stuff pretty much lines up and then the next thing we're going to do is this piece, and I want this to line up also. And you guys, I have one small piece of adhesive left on this. I'm going to use that on this end here, and then we'll put a couple of dimensionals there, if I can find them again. It's crazy how things just disappear around here, you guys. <laughs> okay. Put one there. One here. And the reason I did that is for our trees. So we have a spot to tuck our tree trunks in. And then this. We want this to line up like that and then our photo we're going to mat our photo in here same same as we did before just a glue dot a 
there. Okay, this one we're going to go down a little bit further, make it the focal of our Hmm. What do you guys think? I do like it right here. Because if we put it right here, then it needs a dimensional. Because of the foam sheet that's over here. So, we're going to cover that glue dot up. Because I do like it right here. I want it a little bit lower than this one, but not... As low as this one so I kind of want it in the middle of those two lines because to me that means it's balanced my opinion okay that's what makes sense to me so those are our two pages you guys I'm really liking this all right so this one we're gonna have tall so that one's gonna go here and we're going to do this the same way that we did this. You guys, where did my big... Oh, they're under the silicone craft sheet, you guys. I wonder where the big dimensionals went. There. And there. And we'll do the same thing with this one. Now, I'm using my pokey part of my Take Your Pick tool. Okay. So we've got that. Now I know I need to trim this one, so I'm going to place this one first. I got to go get some glue first. So if I were doing this with pictures already done, you guys. I would pull a color from one of the kids' shirts. Um, I would pull a background color, something like that. All right, and I'm loving how these trees are coming together. It's all the same at the bottom here, but because this one was ripped a little bit wider than this one, you guys, it works out that our trees are looking like they're different heights. Oh. <sighs> love when that happens and then this one I think we're going to put this one right here a little bit shorter we've got that step down working towards our focal point and we'll take off these dimensionals So we're trying to tell our story, right? There. Summer fun. Playing in the sandbox. This could even be something, you guys, that could be playing in the pool. Oh, I like that. A little collection of things. Kind of like that. Oh, that's the wrong way. How did that get all crooked? There we go. Our little shovel and our pad. I think our shovel is a little big. Not going to lie. I am aware of that. All right. Do we need anything else? Wink Estella for our son. Let's do that. There's our sparkle. Okay. Oh, and the, I remember, I remember, I remember. I did not forget, hang on. Let's put these shells on. And I'm gonna use the dimensionals to hold our little net in place.
there and then this one also kind of like that and then the last thing is the sand right we're gonna do couple little piles of sand. I'm going to move this side to you guys so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so I have five dots here of glue. So I'm going to take, and this is going to be messy, take some sand, just like that, and then where's that yucky scrap piece of paper? And I want to push all that in to that glue. And then we're going to take this and we're going to clean up our mess. But see how we get the sand to stick? Now, if you had a lighter play sand, you guys, that would probably work. You could use um, heat and stick for this. That would be cool. Um, I just figured the glue works. If you have, um, let's see, because I, I don't have heat and stick. You know, another thing that would be cool is if you had any of the, um, um, the shimmery crystal effects. That would kind of help hold that in place if you had some of that. Um, I was actually thinking even... Um, if you had a whole, you could do like a whole big little pile of it over here. If you had that shimmery crystal effects, that would be really cool. We don't have that, but it's just options. I like giving you guys options. Okay, so we have our summer fun two-page spread. What do you think? So tell me in the comments section, you guys, are you a scrapbooker or are you a card maker? And what do you think about every once in a while, maybe once or twice a month, doing a two-page spread like this? What do you guys think? Tell me in the comments section because I really do want to know. What do you like to do? You know, you guys know I could, you know, do 3D projects and cart cards every day of the week which I kind of do, but um, what about doing something different like this? Tell me in the comments section, you guys. I need to know. But here's one last look at our cute little two-page summer spread. Some cool ideas to try, right? And then, best of all, you guys, I hope this inspired you to think outside of the box of what your punches and die cuts are for you. Thank you so much for joining me today, you guys. I hope you have an amazing day getting crafty, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thank you, you guys. Bye-bye.